We're gonna get started in just maybe two more minutes. People are still trickling in. Hi, it's uh, Mike Levinson on the phone, in case you wanna. Hi, Mike. Oops. Thank you everyone for being here. My name is Ashley Morris. I'm the organizing director from the ACLU of Northern California, and I'm really happy to be here with you all this evening to get ready for our lobby visits next week. Next slide, please. Okay, so what we're gonna do tonight yeah, is gonna... I wanna walk us through the various materials that are available to you all um, that will help make your visits more successful. We'll talk about how you can get a little bit of additional background information on the legislators that you are going to be uh, lobbying. Then we're gonna review the talking points for each of the bills. You heard a lot about the background and the history and the need for the bills last night. You heard some people's personal stories that connect them to the legislation, but we'll dig in on a few more details about how to talk about the bills. We will see a very brief role play for those of you who haven't lobbied before, so you can see a little bit about what the experience will feel like for you. We'll do a brief overview of some tips for how to tell your story, and then you will break into your teams and practice and prepare for your visits. So now I'm gonna to switch to sharing my screen actually. Um, Tessa, can you make me co-host again, please? Yeah. Tessa, can you make me co-host? Okay, so you all have hopefully already seen these helpful resources. The link that you can go to to view these resources is aclucalaction.org 2022 conference resources. We also have these resources available in Spanish. And one of my colleagues, if you could post those links in the chat right now, that would be great. So the first resource that I wanna point you to is this legislator information um, section on the website. When you click here, you will be brought to these folders where you can look for information about the particular legislators who you'll be lobbying. So let's open up the Senator folder. Some of you are lobbying an assembly member, some of you a Senator, some of you one of each, some of you two of one. Um, let's go to Susan Eggman. So Susan Eggman is the Senator for District 5. We have a visit with her office. Before you meet with her office, if this is the office you're meeting with, first you'll take a look at her overall bio. Um, this is actually her assembly district, so we're not gonna look at that, but you should have a bio in the folder that uh, has, I'll still show you this, a bio in the folder that has um, a picture of the district so that you know what the area is that the legislator covers and a little bit of background information about their legislative interests and their biography. In addition, there's also a document in the folder that is the legislator's voting history. This is super helpful in preparing for your visits and I'll tell you why in a second. So first of all, um, at the top of your voting history, you have the ACLU California Action score that that legislator received if they were in office last year. So as you can see, Senator Eggman, who was actually in the assembly previously, um, received a 99. You can view her score by clicking on the link below. That'll take you to a page on our website where you can see how the legislator voted, which key committees they're on, where their financial contributions have come from. Then back on this page, we have information about how they voted on bills that are related to the bills that we're lobbying on next week. So 
Last year, there was a bill in the legislature, sorry, in 2018, there was a bill in the legislature that would separate the duties of sheriffs and coroner's offices, just like the bill that we're lobbying on next week. And you can see here that Susan Eggman was in the assembly when that bill was being considered and she voted yes on the bill. So that's helpful information for you to have if you're going into a meeting with her office because you can say, number one, thanks for supporting this bill when you were in the assembly. And number two, it just gives you a sense of where that legislator might stand on these issues. Logically, if she supported the bill with the same content four years ago, it's um, likely that she'll be supportive again. Not guaranteed, of course, but that can help you understand kind of where you're entering the conversation with the legislator. Similarly, down here, you'll be lobbying on SB 1038, which is a bill that will extend the protections of AB 1250, 1215, which again, passed years ago through the legislature when Susan Eggman was in the assembly. She voted yes on it. So that gives you a sense of where she might stand on um, SB 1038 now, if it's something that she supported previously. So this is just meant to give you a little bit of context and information about the legislator's background. Obviously, we have some new legislators um, who have only been in office since last year. So we don't have a ton of information about their voting history. They wouldn't have voted on AB 1215. They wouldn't have voted on SB 1303 previously. So you won't have quite as tangible information about them, but we tried to give you a little something to give you a sense of where those legislators might stand. So going back to the conference resources page, another important resource on this page is the sample lobby visit agenda. I'm gonna click on that. That will take you to a Google doc. So this is an overview of how we recommend you run your lobby visit. We have some talking points that are actually built into this document so that you can flow very seamlessly through the conversation. Um, we have some sample language that you can use to kick off the meeting. And then we have some sample language that you can use to wrap up the meeting. So this is intended for you. You can make a copy of this. I'll show you how to do that. If you go up to file in the upper left-hand corner and click on make a copy, it's gonna make a copy of it on your Google Drive. I'm not gonna do that here. It'll make a copy of it on your Google Drive and then you can actually type in your changes. You can have a copy that's shared with your entire team. So you can all you can put in there who's doing which part. You can put like Tanisha is doing this first bill. And have one shared document that you're all working off of for your meeting. So you can be very coordinated because we know it's a lot harder to make eye contact with each other and kind of give each other those nonverbal cues when you're doing these visits virtually versus when you're in person. You can also download it if you want onto your computer, but then the other people on your team won't be able to access it. The next resource slash assignment that I wanna point you to is the lobby visit notes form. So when you click here, you'll actually be taken to this form that you will fill in after your lobby visit. Your team should identify one person for each lobby visit. It can be the same person for all of your meetings or a different person for each visit, I don't care. But someone from your team needs to make sure that you fill this out after your lobby visits. It asks for some sim simple information, your name, the legislator's name of the office that you met with, their district, the actual people that you met with in the meeting, often it's staffers, sometimes it's the legislator and a staffer, and then a list of your lobby team teammates. Then we just have some simple questions. What was the tone of the meeting? What were some key points that you addressed? Did the legislator or staffer make any commitments? And very importantly are these next two questions. What additional information or materials did the legislator or staff member request? And what questions or concerns did the legislator or staff member have? So these are really important. Our California action staff who work in Sacramento are gonna look at these right after the visits and follow up very promptly with these offices 
about any questions or concerns that were raised. So it is 100% okay if you don't have the answers to these questions in your visits, just make sure you take really good notes about what those questions are so that our staff who are working on these bills day in and day out can follow up and give them the information that they need. If they, they likely won't commit to positions on these bills. However, if you get someone to actually make a commitment about how they're gonna vote, you'll indicate this here. And if they're non-committal, you'll indicate that. And then anything else we should know and click submit. I encourage you to do this right after your visit. That's when the, the information is fresh in your head and you're not having to go back and review your notes and ask people, what did the staffers say about this thing? Um, just do it. It should take you 10 minutes max right after the meeting. And again, we only need one of these per team per visit, but we absolutely need at least one of these per team per visit. Um, and then the last thing up here that I'll point you to is the tell your story worksheet. I'm going to walk through the VIPSA model in a little bit, but we have this resource here if you want a PDF of that. Down here at the bottom, we have bill fact sheets and talking points. I want to draw your attention um, first to the talking points documents that we have for each of the bills. This is where I would like you to put most of your focus. These are the most simplified key points about each of these bills. So if you're not sharing a personal story, this is where you'll draw most of what you say in your visit about the bills. There's a lot more information and detail that could be said about any of these things, but these visits are gonna be short. We wanna keep it to the high level core values talking points. And so those are in the talking points documents. So if you review nothing else, if you don't have time to read all the materials, that's okay please focus on the talking points documents. In addition though, we have these fact sheets that are put out by the legislators offices. They all kind of look the same and kind of not that visually pleasing, um, but these have a little bit more technical detail often. And then we have these FAQ documents. So if you're one of the people admittedly like me, who when you go into these lobby visits, you're really nervous you're gonna get a question that you don't have the answer to. First of all, I will say this multiple times tonight, you do not have to have all the answers to the questions. Please don't make up answers. It's totally fine to say that you don't know. However, if you wanna do a little more reading and understand what some of the frequently asked questions are about these bills, or even have this in front of you during your lobby visit in case you get any of the questions on the FAQ document, then please read through this and feel free to use this as a resource to answer any of the questions that come up in your visits. And we have one of these for each of the bills as well. And then finally, there's some additional resources under the um, AB 1608 resources down here. And then we do have all of these available in Spanish, which you can access from this page. Are there any quick questions, clarifying questions about the resources while Tammy gets her screen back up? Ashley, are we doing all three bills on each visit? Are we doing all three bills on each visit? Was that what the question was? You're covering all three bills. However, the Senate bills Tanisha, help me with this one. The Senate bills are going to the Senate and the Assembly bill is going to the Assembly. So that's how we're emphasizing. That's right. Okay. So the Senate bills are, are now being heard and even though bills go to both houses, so don't let me confuse you, eventually they'll go to both houses. The Senate bills, the ones that start with SB are currently being heard by the Senate and the Assembly bill is currently being heard by the Assembly. So you might wanna decide that if you're meeting with an assembly member that you'll do the assembly bill first and put a little more emphasis on the assembly bill. And if you're meeting with a Senator, put a little more emphasis on the Senate bills, just because those are gonna be most relevant 
if a bill doesn't pass through its first house, it never makes it to the second house. So an assembly member might be like, these bills are still in the Senate. I have assembly stuff to deal with. It's going to be months before I have to deal with these bills. I'm not thinking about them yet. Okay, so I have a question. So <clears throat> I, and forgive me. So what bill, oh, the bill that I'm, because I'm the captain, the bill that I'm going to be talking about, I only have one visit. That is in the paperwork, I mean, the uh, email that you sent me with my team, correct? You're talking, you can talk about all three bills, but if your visit is with a senator, there's two Senate bills. So you should kind of cover those first and emphasize those. If your visit is with an assembly member, you should emphasize the assembly bill or cover it first. Okay. Okay, next slide, please, Tammy. All right, so now I'm gonna walk through the rules for your visit. And then after I go through the rules, we'll do a little role play. So you're going to assign people to play these roles. People can play one of these roles or more. Someone might play, someone might start the meeting, be the note taker and close the meeting. That's fine. When we go into the breakouts and practice, that is when you are going to have the opportunity to, um, to determine with your team who should play which role. And I'll dig into each of these a little bit deeper now. Next slide. So as I showed you before, there is a sample agenda on the Google Drive that you can save and edit and share on Google with the rest of your team if you want to all have access to the same document. And then if, if you do that, you can take, if you're in an assembly visit, take the assembly bill talking points, bop, pop those up to the top. If you're in a Senate visit, take the Senate bills, pop those up to the top. So you can move things around on your agenda. So to start the meeting, someone should have the role of kicking things off. Otherwise you're all just gonna sit on Zoom indefinitely staring at each other and we don't want that. So once um, your legislator and staffers have arrived to the Zoom and your team captain has let them in and you're all sitting there on Zoom looking at, looking at each other, you will have someone kick off the meeting by saying, thank you for meeting with us today. We're among 300 ACLU volunteers who are attending this year's ACLU California Action Conference. We're here to talk to you about three important bills. Um, in the meeting agenda, there's also a little bit about um, how many members we have across the state. So you can add that in here. So it's just kicking off the meeting, very simple. So maybe if you're new to lobbying and you don't quite feel comfortable talking about one of the bills yet, but you wanna just start to get your feet wet with lobbying a legislator, this would be a great role for someone who's new to lobbying to play. Then you wanna make sure that the legislator and or their staff know who you are. So just go around and quickly have everyone in the group introduce yourselves, share your name, your pronouns, where you live and whether you're a constituent. So captains on your rosters, we have included information about which districts everyone on your team lives in. And hopefully all of you also know which districts you live in. So if you're a constituent of the person that you're lobbying, you should let them know. So I would say, hi, my name is Ashley. My pronouns are she, hers. I live in Stockton and I am a constituent of Senator Edmund. And then just go around and do that quickly and then allow space for obviously the staffers and the legislator um, to introduce themselves as well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of touch on the very key top line talking points for each of the bills, because again, you're gonna briefly go through all of the bills. These meetings are gonna be 30 minutes max. Often, and especially if you're meeting with a legislator themselves, these meetings are 15 to 20 minutes. So we really have to keep this tight. So for AB 1608, you would say something along the person who wants to talk about this bill, and you'll again decide that in your breakouts later, will say something along the lines of AB 1608 would separate coroner's offices from sheriff's departments in counties across the state. It will serve as a building block to promote transparency and accountability when determining the cause of death of an individual who dies in police custody. Can we count on the legislator's support for AB 1608? 
And this would be the time if there is a personal story that someone in your group has that they wanna share, this would be the time for them to share that story. Then you'll move on to the next bill. So the very top line for the next bill, SB 1038 is, SB 1038 extends an existing law that protects our privacy and civil rights by ensuring that body cameras are not used as roving surveillance devices. AB 1215 was signed into law in 2019 and is set to expire after this year. SB 1038 will ensure the continued protection of our civil rights against the use of facial recognition by law enforcement with body-worn cameras. Can we count on the legislator's support? Um, and again, this would also be the time before you ask for the commitment, Katita, I see your question. Um, you should make the conversation flow like a normal conversation. So you would give the talking points, share the personal story, and then ask if the legislator supports it. And then finally, SB 1273. SB 1273 will eliminate the mandatory requirement that schools notify law enforcement for a wide range of student behavior. Eliminating these requirements will allow educators and school staff the flexibility to adopt non-punitive, supportive, trauma-informed, and health-based approaches to these behaviors. Ken, again, personal story, blah, blah, blah. and you don't have to have a personal story for all of them. In fact, it's probably too much to have a personal story for all of them. And it's not likely that a personal story exists in your team for all of them. So don't feel like you have to come up with something. It's okay if you don't. Can we count on the legislator's support for SB 1273? So those are the very top lines for each of these bills. You'll find that and some additional language on the talking points documents that I shared with you a little bit ago. And then you wanna wrap up the meeting. So, Often over the course of the conversation, you'll, you'll get one of two responses. Sometimes you get a staff member who is silent and stone-faced. You can't read them. You have no idea where they stand. They're hopefully taking notes. They're probably paying attention, but they are not engaging. Sometimes that just happens. If that happens to you, let us know in the notes. Please don't take it personally. I promise it's not about you. Um, and then, uh, so, so you'll, sometimes you'll get a staffer who's like that. And sometimes you'll get someone who's super engaged, either they're really supportive and enthusiastic, or they have a lot of questions. So be prepared for either of those experiences. So you've gone through all of your bills, the legislator or the staffer has asked you questions, and now you want to, um, wrap up your meeting. So I suggest I think it's a really helpful tactic to repeat back any questions. This is a good role to be played by the person who's taking notes for the report back form. So you will have noted any questions that have come up. And so you can just repeat them back and say, okay, I've noted that you have a question about the cost of X, Y, Z and the logistics for implementing blah, blah, blah. And then you wanna confirm any solid commitments. So you would say like, and you've committed to, your, your boss has committed to voting yes on 1038. Thank you so much for that. Then thank them for their time and right away fill out the notes document and submit it. And that's how you have your meeting. So let's stop screen share. And then I wanna introduce my colleagues, Tanisha Humphrey and Katie Dixon, who are going to pretend that I'm a staff member for let's say Senator Eggman, since we're using that theme. And uh, they're gonna be here to lobby me. Where's Katie? I'm right here, my camera not working. I'm gonna spotlight you. There we go. Okay. Am I up there? You're there, you're here. Oh, hi. <laughs> All right. All righty. <clears throat> So thank you so much, Ms. Morris, for taking the time to meet with us today. We really appreciate it. We know it's a lot going on right now up here at the Capitol. Um, my name is KD. I am a constituent of our respective representative area. I live on High East Street. I made that part up, y'all. Um, <laughs> and 
I also am proud to be here today. I am one of 300 members today um, participating in this conference, and I am also representing the 200,000 plus ACLU members that we represent statewide. And today we are here to talk to you about three bills as ACLU community advocates that we definitely hope that the, that the I don't know if this is a senator or a senator member, but that the member will support. And with that, I will turn it over to my team member, Tanisha, to go ahead and introduce you to one of our first bills today. And Tanisha, you take it away. Hi, Ashley. Yes, my name is Tanisha Humphrey. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I am also a constituent. I've lived in the district for over 10 years now. I'm so excited to be meeting with you. And the first bill I wanna to talk to you about is AB 1608, separating the duties of sheriffs and coroner's offices. So this bill was introduced by Assemblymember Gibson. Y'all, I'm literally just reading the script. And it would separate coroner's offices from sheriff's departments and counties across the state. It'll serve as the building block to promote transparency and accountability when determining the cause of death of an individual who dies in police custody. So previous version of this bill passed the legislature in 2018, that was SB 1303, and it was introduced by Senator Pan. And I'll let Katie tell you more about why we need this bill today. Thank you. 10 counties have already separated the duties of the coroner and sheriff, including some of the larger counties, Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Diego, and San Francisco, amongst others. This, we absolutely feel, is a critical step towards ensuring the medical and civic integrity of our criminal legal systems. Families have lost their loved ones in officer-involved incidents, and they deserve a fair, unbiased, and just investigations. I'll turn it back over to Tanisha for reflections of some of personal stories. Yeah, I just wanna emphasize that last point that Katie made. We know that there are constituents living here in your district who've lost loved ones as a result of officer-related inf incidents. And I really just wanna emphasize that as your constituent, I really care about justice. And I think that those families deserve to know the truth of what happened to their family member and so that they can have some closure. I think this is the right thing to do. I think that this bill is a common sense solution to a really unfortunate problem. Can we count on your support for AB 1608? Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming in to meet with me. Um, I've lived in the district myself for 15 years and I've been working for the Senator since she was in the assembly previously. And, um, you know, as you know, she voted for a previous version of this bill. I, I haven't had a chance to speak to her yet about where she stands on, on it now, but I would, I, I doubt anything would change, but I am wondering um, what would this mean for counties in terms of the cost of actually separating these offices and creating a separate department of the coroner's office versus the sheriff's office and you know, what do the sheriffs think about this? Thank you so much. Very important question that I know a lot of people want to know. So as of now, we actually don't have the answer to that particular question. Um, we haven't seen any cost analysis or anything like that yet. What we can do, though, is make sure that we get this information over to an ACLU staff member who can definitely follow up with you with a more appropriate answer. Oh, that would be great. I would appreciate that. I know my boss will want to know the answer to that. We will definitely get those materials to you. Tanisha, you want to add anything? No, I'm ready to move on to SB 1038. And then we'll go over the talking points and tell you all the things. And then we're going to talk about SB 1273. And then we'll go over the talking points and tell you all the things and ask you what you think and tell us. Blah, 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 blah. And now we're at the end of the meeting. Thank you so much. It's been lovely meeting with you. So I just want to confirm you had a few <clears throat> questions about the various bills. We'll make sure to follow up with you and get your questions answered. We really appreciate your time. And um, someone from the ACLU will get back to you soon. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for meeting with me. Thank you so much, Ms. Morse. We appreciate it again. I almost just hit leave on the Zoom, but I'm not really leaving this meeting. <laughs> All right. Yay. Good job, Tanisha and Katie. Okay. I want to point out a couple of things that I noticed during this meeting. 
One is that Katie referred to the legislator as the member. This is a really safe move that you can do. If one, you don't know how to pronounce the legislator's name, call them the member. Two, you're nervous in the meeting. You forget, is it a senator? Is it an assembly member? I can't remember. Call them the member. You don't know their pronouns. Call them the member. It's a, it's a pro tip that will save you every time. You can also sometimes you'll hear people refer to the member as the staffer's boss or the boss of the staffer. You'll, you heard me do this. I said, oh, I think I'll have to I'll talk to my boss about this or my boss might be wondering blah, blah, blah. So that's a way that you can um, refer to them as well. So, OK, that was our role play. Let's go back to our screen share. Thank you again, Tanisha and Katie. I want to quickly go through some tips for how to make it personal. Um, so there was that VIPSA worksheet on the shared resources page. So you can take that and work on it yourself on your own time later. But it's often helpful to use this um, frame for sharing a personal story. So you lead by talking a little bit. And this is a helpful frame, even if you don't have an actual story to tie to the legislation, but you want to speak to your values and why you care about something. So this can be combined with an actual personal story, or it can be a way just to layer the values piece onto this conversation. So again, I'm just going to go super quickly through this, but you can turn to this worksheet later if you want to use it, but lead with your values and what you stand for. What inspires you? Why do you want the legislator to, to do the thing that you're asking them to do? Then describe the problem. State the issue, name the threat. How does the current issue that's happening threaten your values? How is it, um, how is it limiting justice? Who's causing the problem? And then this would be the time where you can share stats or a story. Um, and personal stories are really useful in this context, but make sure that as you're sharing the story, you're thinking about how it ties back to the more systemic issue. Then you wanna present a solution, paint a hopeful path forward. <laughs> um, what can be done to uphold your values and make sure that you're using affirmative language and um, showing what the world can look like if this law is passed and this policy changes. And then action, make a specific demand. In this case, it's pretty clear. We want a legislator to vote a certain way. Next slide. A couple of tips. And again, I said this multiple times. I'll say it again. These meetings will be short. They will probably be about 20 minutes, 30 minutes if someone is super not busy that day and really engaged. So you want to keep it short. Make sure that you're considerate of your group's time and also the staffer or legislator's time. You can practice your spiel. You can time yourself. We have a week before these visits, so you have plenty of time to kind of refine what you're saying and get it down to a minute or two. Again, you can use the VIPSA model that I just shared. And then stories are really powerful tools. I We, we heard some stories yesterday. It's a great way to both understand the issue better and also just understand why something matters and that it has like real world impact on people's lives. So if you have a story that you can share that's tied to any of these issues that you're comfortable sharing, it won't be traumatizing to share the story with you that you feel like can make a difference, we encourage you to, um, to please do that. No pressure. Like, even if you prepare with your team today to share your story and you share your story with your team and you practice it, and then you get into that visit with the legislator, if at that point you're not comfortable, that's, that's totally okay. But if you do have a story that ties to one of these issues that you're comfortable sharing and feel good about sharing, we, we, we've seen how impactful that can be. Next slide. Okay. So you have, most teams have one or two lobby visits scheduled. Some teams have three, and I think there might be one team that now has four. 
um, because of circumstances, but for the most part, most teams have one or two visits scheduled. You should have already received an email last Friday night with your schedule, and you also should have already received some follow-up calls, emails, text messages from your captain or your staff liaison. If you're like, Ashley, what are you talking about? I haven't gotten anything. I have no idea what my visits are. That's a problem that hopefully we will solve for you today. Um, but, but hopefully you've all, you all have that information. So, um, so next week, your lobby visits will all be on Zoom. Hopefully you know that already. You should already have the link to access them. You'll arrive to your visits about 15 minutes early and you can make that decision with your teams together in our prep sessions that we're about to break into. And um, your team captain will be in charge of like getting the Zoom going. And the email that was sent to you with the information about your visits has my cell phone number and Tanisha's cell phone number. So the best way to reach us if there's something urgent that comes up related to your visits is probably text. We're often in meetings or dealing with something, so we may not be able to um, answer a call, but texting us is a good way to reach us quickly. So, um, and I'll actually just put my phone number in the chat right now. Maybe Tanisha can do the same. So text us if you need to reach us tomorrow. So now what we're gonna do, I think that's, is that the last slide, Tammy? Yes. Okay, you can stop sharing then. Okay, so I'm just looking here through the teams really quickly. It looks like we have three people in all of the teams except for G. So some, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go into the breakout rooms. If you have fewer than three people in your visit, have someone pop back into the main room to let me and Tanisha know, and we'll figure out someone who can um, join your team and help you out. But otherwise, this is your time until seven to prepare together. If you wanna stay on past seven, that's fine. I can keep the Zoom open. You can also work out with your team an additional time to prepare for your visits um, over the next week. And if you want a Zoom account to use to have a, another group meeting, we can provide that for you. So captains have also mine and Tanisha's contact information. So if you decide at the end of this that you need more time, that's great. Check in either with me and Tanisha, me or Tanisha or your staff liaison, and we will help make sure that um, you have what you need to finish your team prep. So let's take like, let's take questions for four minutes till 6.15. First, I wanna ask my colleagues, are there any questions in the chat that you haven't been able to answer that you want me to answer verbally right now or that you think are really important to call out verbally? Emily, who's monitoring the chat? You? Anything? No. Anybody have any burning questions before we go into your breakout rooms? Uh, it's not a burning question, but it's a question. First of all, thank you all for being here with us and sharing your wisdom and um, kindness with your time and all that great stuff. I want to know particularly, are there any personal stories that are written up from others that we could possibly use since we may not have experiences or have someone that may have experiences? I know that yesterday, whenever... Um, someone, one of the moderators was speaking, they were sharing a story of a young man who was killed by a police officer. And maybe if that was in writing that we could share that story. I think it was like some case, I can't remember exactly the name. Maybe I'm drawing, you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking. Yeah. <laughs> I see a yeah. lot of headaches. okay. Yeah, um, we don't have any of those in writing. Okay. I think that sometimes it's hard to, sort of translate those stories through multiple people. But I think in these cases, it's fine to say, like we have heard, like I recently went to an event where I heard from someone who's family member and you don't have to get into the details of it, but you can give the basic gist of it. And I think that can still be very compelling. And, and instead, of, instead of 
being the person to share this other person's story, you can kind of talk more about how hearing that this is a thing that happens impacted you. Okay, thank you. Can I add on to that, Ashley? Yes. Um, awesome. Hi, everyone. Raquel Ortega, I'm also staff. But um, I also wanted to add, I know oftentimes with stories, People are like, oh, but like, I don't have like a heartbreaking, devastating story, you know, and like, I shouldn't speak, but I think it's also really important. Like all of our lived experiences are valid. And I think sometimes it's important to, to name too, like maybe I, you know, saying something like, I've never had to experience the loss of a loved one being murdered by police. And unfortunately that's not, I know that that's not everybody's experience and like everyone um, should, should, you know, like me not have to think about that or worry about that. So, you know, I think that there's also ways that you can like speak from your perspective as like a positive too. So I encourage folks to think about it that way too. It's also like valid and important. Thanks, Raquel. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you into your breakout rooms. Tanisha and I will be here. So if you need to come back into the main room to ask us questions, you can. And I'm gonna open the breakout rooms.